Implantation of the blastocyst usually occurs six to eight days after fertilization. By the end of day eight, the blastocyst has burrowed into the endometrium of the uterus. At this time, it is composed of two main components, the outer cell mass, the trophoblast, and the inner cell mass, the embryoblast. As the trophoblast makes contact with the endometrium, it differentiates into two layers, an inner cytotrophoblast and an outer syncytiotrophoblast. The embryoblast differentiates into a bilaminar embryonic disc composed of two cell layers, the hypoblast and the epiblast. Soon after the embryonic disc has formed, a cavity begins to appear between the epiblast and the cytotrophoblast, known as the amniotic cavity. Cells originating from the hypoblast begin to migrate, forming a thin membrane which covers the inner surface of the cytotrophoblast. This is called the exocelomic membrane. The exocelomic membrane and cells of the hypoblast together form the walls of the primitive yolk sac. By day nine, the blastocyst is completely embedded in the uterus wall. At this stage of development, the growth of the syncytiotrophoblast and cytotrophoblast is much quicker than the bilaminar embryonic disc. Small holes called lacunae begin to form in the syncytiotrophoblast as it continues to expand. By day 12, the lacunae stop growing and fuse to form large interconnecting spaces called lacunar networks. Capillaries in the endometrium surrounding the developing embryo dilate, forming maternal sinusoids. As the syncytiotrophoblast continues to expand, enzymes begin to erode the lining of the sinusoids and uterine glands, allowing maternal blood and uterine secretions to flow into the lacunar networks, establishing a uteroplacental circulation. The blood and uterine secretions only come into close proximity to the embryo, allowing the exchange of gases and metabolites. Around the same time, a new population of cells appear between the inner surface of the cytotrophoblast and the outer surface of the primitive yolk sac, known as the extraembryonic mesoderm. Large cavities begin to appear in the extraembryonic mesoderm these gradually fuse to form one single cavity, called the chorionic cavity. Around 13 days after fertilization, a large portion of the exocelomic cavity is pinched off, forming a smaller cavity, the secondary yolk sac. By the end of the second week of development, the chorionic cavity enlarges and the bilaminar embryonic disc is joined to the trophoblast by a band of extraembryonic mesoderm called the connecting stalk, the future umbilical cord.